It was a pleasure to catch up with defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo in this edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. I'll tell you what, defense played a dominant football game out in Denver. Denver's defensive football team makes offenses earn everything. They don't give you anything. They are second in the National Football League in points allowed for a reason. <laughs> they play smart football. This game was going to be a low-scoring, tightly contested football game. The Bengals' defense basically played a little bit better than the Denver Broncos' defense. That's a tribute to the players, the coaches, and defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham once again, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and a very special honor once again to be joined by defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. I'll tell you what, Coach, what a masterpiece your uh, football team performed for you in uh, the masterpiece that you put together game plan-wise. The numbers are – got to make sure that I'm reading this right, so i got to get my, uh, my spectacles on. The numbers are staggering. I mean, <laughs> they are on the field for 71 snaps – accumulated 292 yards, 4.1 yards per play. I'm not talking about per rush. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about per play and 10 points, holding them to 10 points. The defensive efficiency had to be very pleasing when you took a look at that tape, huh? Yeah. Yeah, was, uh, I appreciate all that. You know, the players did a great job executing the plan that we put together for them. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, like you just said, Lap, the 10 points is what's critical. Um, yep. You know, keep them off the scoreboard. And, uh, you know, they, we really you know, just attribute to the guys and, you know, how well they understood the plan and, and dove in. And uh, it really fixed the things that, um, you know, we, a couple of things the uh, previous week that we could have done better, certainly uh, against the Niners. Um, and uh, kind of just played right into this, and it was it was a it was a hell of a win for us out there. It really was. It was it was spectacular. You, you look at your interior defensive lineman. Everybody deservedly got a game ball after the football game. You rotated four guys in there, and all four guys had an impact doing the same thing. I mean, not letting offensive linemen get to that linebacker level. You know, Pratt benefits uh, by nine solo tackles, six assists for 15 tackles. He's flowing and making tackles everywhere. It, it, it was well done inside, wasn't it? Yeah, as we always say, it always starts up front, and uh, those guys did a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, Jermaine, he's, he's, uh, he's been something all year long. So, so proud of him, the way he prepares, and uh, how he handles his uh, – goes, goes about his everyday business. Uh, couldn't be happier for him and for us the way he's playing. Yeah, he is. He is uh, really. He sees it so fast, Coach. I mean, it's almost like he sees it before it happens. Is there? Is he amongst, uh, from a preparation standpoint, from study habits and work ethic and all that sort of thing? Is he amongst the best that you've coached? Oh, no question, he is. Um, he 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 is uh, truly like a coach on the field. You know, as I mentioned before, Al Al Golden does a great job with those guys, and um, you know. Uh, Jermaine's calling stuff out before it happens, making the right calls and putting guys in position to make plays, you know, just from the little adjustments that we take during the game. So it's uh, uh, he, he's um, it just again, as I mentioned, happy, happy for him, happy for us. So and you always say this, coach, and I think it's 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 makes total sense. Uh, it's, it's a football axiom that I totally believe in. You earn the right to rush the passer by stopping the running game. Mm -hmm. And now you get three quarterback sacks in this football game. You got 40 on the season, 40 quarterback sacks in 14 games. That's got to be satisfying. Yeah, especially where we're coming from. You know, we were last in the league last year. We only had 17 for the year right. um, and um, weren't much better the year prior to that. So uh, it, it's it just makes everybody's life uh, better, <laughs> uh, especially when you can just pressure with four guys. And, and uh, you know, and Trey Henderson's done a tremendous job but it's all of them, you know, it's all the collective work and Sam and DJ and Larry, BJ Hill, all those guys together, Cam, Sample, you know, uh, Khaled, Kareem showed up last week and, and made some big plays for us. So the collective group has done a great job and uh, we got to keep it going this week. Uh, uh, Kareem, I want to get back to him, but uh, Hendrickson on bowls, 
down the stretch in the fourth quarter, Henderson forces two holding penalties that were key, that were critical. And it's not, it's like a quarterback sack because they lose the 10 yards. They don't lose the down, but it gets them off schedule. I mean, um, he, he impacts it. And, and all great pass rushers impact it more than just their sack numbers. I mean, there's a big ripple effect, and uh, he, he's yeah. one of those kind of guys, isn't he? Oh, no doubt. And anytime you get a great pass rusher like Trey, <clears throat> those are the, those are the things that come with it. You don't, you know, everybody talks about the sacks, but it's the it's the false starts, uh, legal procedures that you get tackles to jump. Um, it's the holding calls that he draws. It's all those things that come with having a premier pass rusher and. Right. Uh, you know, he's he's just relentless. He's as good as he is in the first quarter as he is in the fourth. He's uh, he's that type of guy. You know, that's the other thing, Coach. Um, your defense, and, and you did a masterful job of rotating guys and keeping guys fresh when you could. Um, but a guy like Pratt and other linebackers, you're, you're down numbers-wise at that position group. And to be on that field in those conditions, you know, with the mile-high deal, for over 70 snaps, you you got to – a football team that's in pretty darn good physical shape, Coach. Yeah, they they. Uh, I only saw a couple of them with the uh, oxygen masks on during the game, and certainly it was late. We had a long drive before the half. We were pretty. We were managing it pretty good, and then that last drive before the half was twelve plays that got us up our right. snap count up a little bit, um, and uh, and then into the fourth quarter. But the guys handled it well. Again, the coaches rotated their guys uh, as we always do. Uh, and again, Hop Marion does a great job with the guys up front, uh, rotate, rotating them through, keeping them fresh. Um, and so uh, it pays off in the in the end. And at the end of the season, you know, these guys get worn down. It's just the nature of the beast. And, you know, we're trying to keep them as fresh as possible. One of the guys that you were rotating in there, Kareem, you know, with Hendrickson and keeping uh, both players fresh. And <clears throat> I think Kareem had 26 snaps going into the game and had 13 in mm -hmm. that football game and they get hurt. But of those 13 snaps, at least half of them, it's like, wow, man, this guy is flashing. I mean, not he had he had the only takeaway of the game, but he was making plays. I mean, he had a heck of a football game. Yeah, he played well. We were happy for him. Um, you know, hopefully he'll be able to bounce back this week and uh, follow it up with another good game. Yeah, I mean, that that uh, that takeaway, <laughs> you, you always talk about it. it. It's all about the ball, and you guys are all, always talking about reaching in there, ripping it, stripping it, getting it off players, and – that's exactly what he did. I mean, he was showing the football, and he went after that thing, man. Uh, it was a great play. You know, you can argue the biggest play of the game, not knowing that one play is not going to make it or break it. But uh, it was a huge, huge play for us. And, uh, you know, yeah, we, we have strip attempt goals every week. You know, we've been hitting them. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep ripping at that ball. And, uh, you know, it's, it's some, some of that stuff comes naturally to guys and other things. You know, you just got to keep hammering at home. But right now, the, you know, the guys are seeing – uh, the benefits of all the work they've put in. So we got to, you know, we keep doing that, those drills and, and um, keep showing up on Sundays. You've been beaten up at the linebacker level position wise, uh, somewhat physically, obviously. And then on the back end, uh, you were, you were dinged up a little bit and guys yeah. had to step up and, and, and guys had to uh, expand their roles as such. How proud of you or what the, how proud of what they did are you? Uh, very. I mean, you know, the, again, I mentioned it. We're not the only team that has injuries right. this time of the year. Everybody's banged up and we talk about the collective room. You know, when it's, when your name is called, being ready to step up and make plays uh, and knowing what your assignment is, whether you're on the practice squad or or not, especially with the, the world we live in today, you can be elevated on game day um, and and. You know, you have to go in there and play meaningful snaps. So everybody knows what's at stake, and uh, you know the the studying of each guy is is uh, is at a paramount right now. That uh, that's a good little segue position there, Coach. Uh, let's, as you guys always do, put put that one to bed now. Yeah. You know that 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 game's uh, we're done. It, it, yeah. A great win, no question about it. Now, and we got to think about the Baltimore Ravens, and uh, and that and that's an organization and a football team that has had quite a bit of injury. But I'll tell you, I, I respect the coaching staff, the players, the way they've adjusted, you know, the way coaches have gotten the next man up in their situation. And they've lost three in a row, but by a total of four points, you know, and yeah. they're, they're two two point conversions away from being two and one instead of 0 oh and three in the last uh, last three weeks. When you look at tape of the Ravens, how different does that football team look to you personnel wise? Well, I mean, you know, the injuries are uh, that they have are obvious, you know, with some of the guys up front on the O-line, the running backs, 
uh, not having Lamar last week. But, uh, right. you know, as I mentioned and as you mentioned, you know, everybody's got that these time, this time of the year. And, you know, they, they've been dealing with it pretty much all season. But, uh, you know, you put that helmet on and it says Bengals or Ravens on it and nobody cares. You got to go out there and, uh, you know, you got to go out there and play and perform at the highest level. So we're we're expecting all their guys to play. Uh, that are questionable. We're expecting uh, Lamar to play. Uh, you know, he's, he's uh, as we know, what a great, great player um, he is. And we know what challenges he brings. Um, and as always, with a team like this, we'll have our hands full. But, uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. I think back to that uh, victory in Baltimore, Coach, and it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, 41 to 17, um, to beat them by 24 points at their place was just the way that game unfolded in the fourth quarter, it was a 10 point game going into the fourth quarter and put it away. But um, the way that entire football game was played, I, I admired what you guys did up there big time. But I'm thinking back to that game and you had, you ran a little bit of like a four down lineman, four linebacker look some. And some of the linebackers that I remember in that game that flashed to me, Akeem Davis gave or Logan Wilson. We're, what we're talking about. I mean, this stage of the season, some players aren't going to be available to you. And those two guys, you know, played big roles for you. They're not available to you. And Bocce, unfortunately, tears his ACL in the mm -hmm. last football game. I mean, you know, it's um, now now you're you're working with other guys and, and getting them ready to play against a freak at the quarterback position, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Again, the challenges are real um, this time of the year. Uh, but we feel confident in the guys we have and um, – you know, coaches will do a great job getting them ready to play. And, and uh, you know, again, nobody cares. We got a Bengals helmet on. We'll go out there and uh, we got to do, we got to compete and um, and do the best that we can. And I know we will. We, as I'll say one more time, we have full confidence of the guys that we have. Uh, Marcus Bailey will step up. Austin Kalitra will step up. All those guys, you know, around Jermaine. Um, you know, we've got Clay Johnson who's coming back um, from COVID. So, you know, we, we those guys are on the team for a reason, um, and we're looking forward to, to watching them play this weekend. You know, they they, um, they have a 311 pound fullback that has had a knee problem, hasn't played the last couple of weeks, and and they kind of that minimized that package. Mm -hmm. You know, with him, and that, that's a big part of their package. I mean, they have so so many unusual things. I guess the physical talents of the quarterback in terms of running the football is unusual. A 300 pound 300 pound plus fullback that isn't a stiff. I mean, he can catch the football, he can run the football, but he's a hell of a blocker. They, they have some unusual traits uh, in their personnel, don't they? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, they, you know, it's a, you talk about a whole um, different deal. What they've done is they've used uh, 86 Boyle uh, kind of in 42's role a little bit um, and just creating different looks, but uh, you know, they, you know, they do a great job. Uh, you know, um, you know, we say it every time we play them, uh, Greg Roman does a fantastic job, in my opinion, um, you know, with their scheme and what they do with their players and, and you get into the best of their ability. So um, but we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll uh, be ready for the challenge and uh, looking forward to it. In this in this uh, you mentioned Greg Roman and, and what he does, the, the multiplicity uh, of, of what he presents in terms of formations and motion and, and uh, eye candy and and things of that nature. Um, it, it, you've seen it like the 49ers did a lot of it for the run and the pass, but the, this is prim primarily for the running game. It, is it about as sophisticated uh, a scheme as you go up against in the NFL with Greg Roman? Well, it, it, there's just so many different types of runs uh, that you get. So, you know, he's, if, if not at the top of the list, he's right, he's right there. Um, as I mentioned, you know, they just give you so many things to look at, so many things to mess with your eyes as a linebacker and a safety um, you know, so it's, it's just about really zoning in on our keys, knowing where we have to be, um, and using the indicators that they give us when they give it to us. Cause you don't get a whole bunch. So, um, you know, they, there's a reason why they're always top in the top one, two or three in the league in rushing. And it's a, because of their players and, and B because they have a terrific scheme. I know you've mentioned, uh, in the past, obviously Jackson is huge in terms of controlling, uh, him in the, in the running game. And then obviously uh, keeping him contained, you yeah. know, in the pocket. Uh, but, but 89 Andrews mm -hmm. and five Brown, those are, those are two big weapons too for him, yeah. aren't they? No, they're great players. Um, 
you know, and you know, we did a good, solid job on Andrews. And, you know, Brown had the big one on us on a double move in the first game. Um, you know, it's kind of taken uh, what we've learned over the last, you know, over throughout the season since we played them and, you know, guys honing in on exactly what we want to do when we're playing, you know, uh, guys like that, you know. Um, you know, we go back to the last third down in overtime against San Fran where they hit Kittle um, kind of on a quick slant. And really, he's he's uh, doubled on that play. And, um, you know, we didn't quite get there quick enough. And, yeah. uh, you know, little things like that will mean the difference in a game like this. So, you know, um, you know, I think that the guys will – uh, won't make that you know error again, and, and we'll be all over it. And this this game fascinates me, Coach. I mean, you had such an unbelievable game plan the first time, and and you know, in the game that big old game of football chess. You know, I'm always always intrigued by, you know, what 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 will be carried over that was successful. What do you what are the tweaks? What are the adjustments? Man, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh, seeing this football game unfold. I do know one thing though. As Paul Brown said, you know, we can trick them. We can try to trick them. You know, we can do whatever. We, but you guys have to block and tackle. If you don't That's block right. and tackle, it doesn't matter what the hell I do, you know. Yeah. And he, he's exactly right. And this one is going to be so exciting because, I'm, you know, the players are going to be up in the bit. You guys are going to have an unbelievable uh, game plan. This is going to be football at its finest, Coach. I can't wait. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with what you said. To me, at the end of the day, uh, there's going to be a guy you got to get off a block. And there's got to be a guy that you're going to have to tackle, and there's going to be a guy you have to cover, um, in no matter what the defense is. And and I have uh, supreme confidence in our guys. Um, you know, can't say enough about the way um, all of them, but the leadership from Vaughn Bell, Jesse Bates, Sam Hubbard, uh, Jermaine Pratt, all of those guys um, has been terrific. And so whatever job we ask those guys to do, uh, they really, really honed in on it and. Um, you know, even if there's a, a slight error, as I said earlier, um, on some things, they come in, we fix it immediately, and it and it doesn't. There's no there's no real repeat offenders. So um, our guys have really handled the adjustments well, and you know, this part in the season, that's what it's about. You know, so l looking forward to everything that uh, this Sunday brings, and um, I know the guys are as well. And finally, coach, and appreciate the time you've carved as okay. always. You're very generous with it. In, in conversation with Jesse Bates in the locker room after last week's victory in Denver, he mentioned how uh, the secondary and other position groups are meeting on their own collectively, starters, backups, everybody. And he said, we'll bring a backup quarterback in there to get their take on it and just football philosophy and, and, and their take, their perspective. To me, that's huge. When, when guys are doing that, that's telling you that this is important to us. We want to dot every I, cross every T, that's when you have something special going, don't you? Yeah, you know, as you and I have talked, I mean, to me, and I've said it, you know, when the players take ownership um, of of their team, uh, it's just uh, it's it's a whole different level. And you know, I walked down there this morning. There's the you know they're all down there. They're meeting. They're talking. They're you know laughing. Uh, you know, and and that's that's a part of it. Um, you know, just yeah. focusing in on what you know their jobs are going to be. But yeah, it's their day off. But they're in here getting it. Uh, a head start on things and um that's always a great sign they've been doing it all year right from the beginning um so it's not all of a sudden you know that we're late in the season hey let's start studying harder that's it's been since uh the first game that they've done these type things so and it's and it's shown well coach that uh speaks to the culture that you built on that side of the football and uh congratulations uh to you your staff and your players Appreciate How it. the season's gone to this point and, and finish strong, sir. Yes, sir. Well, there'd be no better Christmas present than a than a win on uh, than a win on Sunday. But uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody, and good to talk to you as always, Lap. Oh, ho, ho to that victory, Coach. That'd yeah, be man. huge. <laughs> All right, brother. Enjoy the holiday, sir. You too. Talk to you. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know, you know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.